ladies and gentlemen, dear friends who are joining us online for this beautiful event of the exhibition of the Church of the Nativity of Bethlehem. We are very happy and proud today and honored to bring Bethlehem to you wherever you are in the world. My name is Carla Kijoya, and I am the program executive for the Middle East at the World Council of Churches. And I'm happy to introduce you this event today. So this exhibition comes to the Ecumenical Center here in Geneva as the result of different meetings, efforts, collaboration, and work done by our team here, WCC Geneva, and the Palestinian, Palestinian mission at the UN as well. It describes the process of the renovation of the Church of the Nativity throughout the different uh, steps, phases, and years. It also describes the history of Bethlehem and its importance, spiritual importance, to all the humanity in the world. The exhibition that is present here in Geneva has captions in French, but then it also has a um, QR code that you can find on their website as well. And the QR code will give you access to more information about the different panels that are exposed here in the Ecumenical Center. So this exhibition has toured in different places of the world, in Paris at the UNESCO headquarters, it was in the Vatican, and it went through different cities of Italy. And we are very happy today to host it in Geneva it will be on in Geneva until the 5th of October, so we welcome all our friends who are in the city or who are visiting the city to stop by and uh, visit this beautiful exhibition. Now, in order to give you an immersive experience of what is happening here and an experience of the process of the renovation of the Church of Nativity, we invite you to follow a, docu a documentary that will describe the history of the church and the different steps of the renovation. And then you will be joined by our speakers and our guests here present in the Ecumenical Center, and we will start the official panel. So I invite you to stay with us, and uh, we welcome you again, and I will see you again very soon. Une basilique a été construite là où naquit Jésus, dans la ville de Bethléem, en Palestine. Elle resplendit de tous ses feux, embellie avec l'or, les mosaïques et les marbres précieux. Bethléem signifie « la maison du pain ». C'était un petit village sur une colline. La tradition chrétienne y situait la grotte de la Nativité sur un promontoire au nord. Bientôt, un cadre digne du Fils de Dieu sera édifié autour de cette humble grotte. 
la basilique de la Nativité fut construite autour de l'an 333. Les protagonistes de ce destin furent l'empereur Constantin et sa mère Hélène. Hélène, alors âgée de 80 ans, partira pour la Terre Sainte, y parcourir les étapes porteuses d'un édit impérial sacralisant par la construction d'édifices majestueux les lieux où vécu Jésus. On entre dans la basilique en traversant une vaste colonnade. L'intérieur est constitué d'une structure divisée par cinq nefs. Le sol est orné d'une décoration en mosaïque. Le pèlerin parcourt la nef et atteint l'abside octogonale. Au centre de l'octogone, un oculus dans le toit éclaire l'autel qui se trouve exactement au-dessus de la grotte de la Nativité. Les archéologues ont mis à jour de grandes portions de mosaïques qui, restaurées, ont retrouvé leur beauté originelle. Trois siècles ont passé. Sous le règne de Justinien, la basilique subit le premier changement radical. Nous sommes à la fin du VIe siècle. L'empereur ordonna la démolition de l'église de Bethléem, trop réduite, et la reconstruction d'une église splendide, grande et belle, au point que même Jérusalem n'en possédait pas d'aussi belle. La basilique de Justinien est l'église que nous pouvons voir aujourd'hui. Cette nouvelle basilique s'ouvrait sur la place à Arcade avec une façade monumentale à trois portails décorés qui permettaient l'accès au narthex et aux nefs. Les pèlerins suivaient un parcours et un rituel identique au rituel actuel. Une fois dans l'église, après avoir traversé la colonnade de la nef et descendu quelques marches, le visiteur accède à la grotte. La grotte est le lieu de la prière, de la vénération. L'objet de la dévotion est le site où l'enfant a été mis au monde et la mangeoire où il fut dépôt. La grotte était également un lieu de rite et de tradition. Sur cette table de porphyre où Marie a accouché, les femmes musulmanes font le pain avec une grande dévotion et quand il est cuit, elles l'envoient dans tout le pays. Les futures mamans en prennent un morceau au moment des douleurs de l'accouchement. Quand elles le mangent, elles accouchent sans douleur. À Bethléem, la maison du pain. La basilique connaît une nouvelle période de splendeur durant le règne latin en Palestine. L'aspect extérieur de la basilique justinienne subit un changement radical. La basilique prendra l'aspect que nous connaissons aujourd'hui, si similaire d'une forteresse. Une tour de défense, un monastère et des hospices sont érigés pour les pèlerins toujours plus nombreux. Au même moment, on intervient sur l'appareil décoratif de la basilique. La décoration en mosaïque, réalisée durant la domination latine en Terre Sainte, est celle que nous pouvons voir en partie aujourd'hui encore. En entrant dans la basilique, une procession d'anges descendus sur terre pour adorer l'enfant Jésus accueille le visiteur et guide les pèlerins vers la grotte. Jusqu'à ces dernières années, les anges visibles étaient au nombre de six. Au cours de la restauration, une extraordinaire découverte a cependant eu lieu. Cachée par le plâtre, la figure d'un septième ange est apparue. L'ange avait été couvert car son visage avait été endommagé, probablement par un projectile. Au cours de la période de décadence de la basilique, les soldats ottomans s'exerçaient avec leur arquebusier contre les mosaïques. 
Les restaurateurs ont ainsi découvert le septième ange, en ont reconstruit une partie du visage et l'ont ramené à la vie. Nous pouvons connaître les auteurs de ces mosaïques extraordinaires, ce qui est rarissime dans l'art moyenâgeux. Il s'agit d'Ephraim et de Basilius, dont les noms apparaissent à l'intérieur du cycle de mosaïque. Le cycle de mosaïque croisé a un style unique en son genre, difficile à cataloguer. On y retrouve des éléments de la tradition byzantine, occidentale et islamique. Ephraim et Basilius prennent également de grandes libertés iconographiques par rapport au modèle précédent. La scène sur l'incrédulité de saint Thomas est emblématique. Le Christ serre le poignet de Thomas et est représenté pendant qu'il pousse la main de l'apôtre vers son flanc blessé. L'impact émotionnel est très fort. C'est un geste qui apparaît pour la première fois dans l'histoire de l'art. En entrant dans la basilique, le pèlerin n'est pas uniquement accompagné par une procession d'anges. Les regards des saints et des madones, peints sur les colonnes des nefs centrales, sont posés sur quiconque entre dans la nativité. Des peintures à l'huile, réalisées à l'époque des croisés, sont finalement visibles grâce à un impressionnant ouvrage de restauration. Les traits et les couleurs, noircis par le temps, effacés par les impositions des mains des pèlerins, cachés par la fumée des cierges et par l'humidité, sont ressortis du marbre. La basilique de la Nativité a traversé des siècles d'histoire en surmontant les guerres, les tremblements de terre, les assauts. Au cours des dernières années, la négligence et les marques du temps mettaient en danger l'existence même de l'Église. L'Autorité nationale palestinienne a pris l'initiative en 2010 en parvenant à un accord avec les trois communautés chrétiennes qui gèrent la basilique, entamant ainsi le parcours complexe de la restauration commencée en 2013. Au terme de sept ans de travaux, la basilique de la Nativité est aujourd'hui sauve. Ce lieu très saint est si empreint de dévotion que la langue humaine n'arrive pas à le décrire. Pour conclure, j'ose dire que si la foi chrétienne devait périr, elle revivrait dans cette chapelle et lieu d'accueil très sain, car chaque fois que vous entrez ici, l'homme se renouvelle dans l'esprit. Vous ressentez une nouvelle joie et une consolation spirituelle apportant du repos pour chaque fatigue, la victoire sur la tentation, le soulagement de l'angoisse, la certitude de son propre salut et un avant-goût du paradis. Il est juste que le lieu le plus extraordinaire et merveilleux au monde soit décoré comme il mérite.
A very warm greetings to all of you. We are so glad that you have taken the time to be present with us today. Uh, I'm just overwhelmed by so many uh, ambassadors and diplomatic people who have made it their purpose to be with us this afternoon. And we really want to say thank you for your presence. Uh, I will speak a little later on uh, in the program, but my task up front is to say a very special welcome to all of you. I will acknowledge uh, people later in my, in my address, but we are grateful to have you with us. And we look forward to a, a great time together today as we listen to some speeches, but also as we get some insight into the exhibition. So a very, very special and warm welcome to all of you. Do enjoy this time with us. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and fellow participants. Greetings as well to all those who are following us online through the live streaming. Please note that we have interpretation available on channel one. If you cannot go to Bethlehem, then Bethlehem comes to you. It is with great pleasure that we welcome you to this special event dedicated to the timeless city of Bethlehem a place steeped in history, culture, and profound faith. We invite you to join the journey of exploring the rich heritage of Bethlehem, a city that has touched hearts and inspired people across the world. We have the privilege of hearing from a lineup of distinguished speakers who will share their valuable insights. Without further ado, let's begin our journey through Bethlehem by introducing our first speaker, his Beatitude, Theophilos III, the Patriarch of the Holy City of Jerusalem and of all Palestine. Born in Greece, he attended school in Jerusalem until he became a monk in 1970. After his ordination as a priest in 1975, he pursued higher education in Athens, Greece, and Durham, England. His Beatitude served in Jordan, Qatar, Russia, Palestine, Israel, before being unanimously elected as Patriarch of the Ancient Patriarchate of Jerusalem by the Holy and Sacred Synod in 2005. After his enthronement, his beatitude has been actively involved in enhancing the functions of the Patriarchate, as well as the Council of Patriarchs and Heads of Churches of Jerusalem. What is more, he made sure to further develop the participation of the Church of Jerusalem in inter-Orthodox and interfaith dialogues. His beatitude frequently appears in the press and frequently receives and visits senior academics, officials, and political leaders from around the world to promote the critical importance of the Christian presence and witness in the region. Your beatitude, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. It's a great honor for me to address this special uh, gathering here. Mr. Secretary General, Dr. Huri, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. We bring you greetings from the holy city of Bethlehem. Our gathering today at the headquarters of the World Council of Churches where we have this exhibition of the restoration of the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, give us a unique opportunity to reflect upon the significance of Bethlehem and this great church. The exhibition shows the renovation of the church building itself and the beauty of the mosaics, the columns, and the different types of tiles and crafted goods. It is of crucial importance that this unique architectural structure be carefully and faithfully preserved, but the basilica is more than a building of historical or artistic interest, and Bethlehem is more than just another city. 
we venture to suggest that Bethlehem and its basilica must be understood in three aspects. The first and obvious aspect is its place in history. There has been a church on this site since the early 330, and the present structure dates from the reign of the Emperor Justinian in the sixth century. It was one of the first of the holy places to be reconstructed by the Emperor Saint Constantine and his mother Saint Helena. And it is the oldest complete church in the Christian world. The Rome Orthodox Church has been the guardian and servant of this church from its very foundation and has been a witness down the ages to the embodiment of our common sacred history in the region and to the divine human encounter. For here, the divine logos was revealed. The second aspect to understand is the theological significance. As the hymnographer writes, your nativity, O Christ our God, has shown to the world the light of knowledge. For by it, those who worship the stars were taught by a star to adore you, the son of righteousness, and to know you, the day spring from on high, O Lord, glory to you. There is a rich theological and spiritual depth to Bethlehem and the Basilica, which is inexhaustible. Bethlehem is the city of peace and righteousness where the sun of righteousness shines. Bethlehem is the house of bread where the one who feeds the world with the bread of life was born. This basic human need of physical and spiritual nourishment is at the heart of the message of Bethlehem. Lastly, we must mention the universal aspect. Bethlehem and the Basilica are signs of hope, not just to one community or church, but to the whole human family without distinction. Pilgrims of all faiths and none come here every day, drawn as the Magi of old were drawn by a star of hope in their hearts, a star of hope for better world, a star of hope for that peace which passes understanding. As we struggle to preserve a vital and vibrant Christian presence in the Holy Land in the face of a resurgence of radicalism and hatred in the society, and as our world is plunged deeper and deeper into confusion and despair, the universal spiritual vocation of Bethlehem and the Basilica has never been more urgent. The Church of the Nativity is no mere archeological site or museum. It is a living witness to hope and to light and to life. All this is the heritage that the churches and especially the Patriarchate of Jerusalem have energetically guarded and preserved for all humanity throughout the ages. It is in the context it is in the context of all these reflections that we thank the World Council of Churches for uh, highlighting the restoration of the Church of the Nativity by hosting this exhibition. In this way, we demonstrate our fellowship within the World Council of Churches and it brings to the attention of the member churches the importance of solidarity with the Christian community of the Holy Land. And we recall today with uh, gratitude that the Patriarchate of Jerusalem was among the earliest supporters and participants in the World Council of Churches. More personally, we are mindful of the time we spent here as a young priest representing the Patriarchate at the highest level of the world 
of the World Council of Churches. Your support for this work of restoration is all the more significant when we realize that the Church of the Nativity is a symbol for us all of the unity of the Christian family for which the World Council of Churches exists and for which we all fervently pray. For in the church are important mosaics now revealed and restored of the seven ecumenical councils with their inscriptions in Greek and Latin of the decrees of the ecumenical councils. We wish to take this opportunity to thank you, Mr. Secretary General, and your distinguished team for putting on this exhibition and for hosting us. We would also like to express our gratitude to the team who carried out the renovation work and paid tribute to the collaboration between the three communities to ensure that the work could be completed. Most of all, we convey our appreciation to His Excellency, the President of the Palestinian State, Mr. Mahmoud Abbas, who took the initiative and who has been instrumental in the restoration work and who continues to show concern about preserving the Church of the Nativity, which is a symbol of hope and peace and a symbol of unity and coexistence for the Palestinian people both Christian and Muslims. May God bless you, Mr. Secretary General, and the mission of the World Council of Churches, and may God bless all the people of our beloved Holy Land. Thank you. Thank you, your beatitude. We feel honored and uh, blessed that you're among us today. Excellencies, esteemed guests, dear friends, it's a great honor for me to join my colleague Carla in welcoming you to this very special occasion on behalf of all Palestinian partners, the Higher Presidential Committee of Churches Affairs in Palestine, the Committee for the Restoration of the Church of the Nativity, the uh, Embassy of the State of Palestine to the Holy See, the Permanent Mission of the State of Palestine to the United Nations and other organizations, and the Bethlehem Development Foundation. The exhibition Bethlehem Reborn Palestine Wonders of the Nativity does not only tell a story that goes beyond the history of politics and art, but is, it is also a success story, one of few in a very challenging context. It is a success story that managed to reveal to humanity an overdue recognition of the outstanding value of Palestinian heritage. It also highlights the artistic beauty, the historical significance, and more importantly, as his beatitude has emphasized, the spiritual message of the Church of the Nativity after years of extensive restoration work, which I was honored to be part of in different stages of my professional career as architect, minister, diplomat, and currently CEO of the Bethlehem Development Foundation. Back in 2008, a presidential decree was issued with the blessing of the three custodians of the Church of the Nativity, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Custody of the Holy Land, and the Armenian Church to carry out a scientific restoration program. This would be the first major restoration since 1479. Funds were allocated from state budget, Palestinian private sector, governments, churches, organizations worldwide, as well as individual, uh, individuals from Palestine and the diaspora. The restoration process, as you would see in the exhibition, has been long and complex. For more than 10 years, many people, including around 400 workers and experts have been working to bring this significant aura of old glory and aesthetics to light. As a result, this first World Heritage Site submitted by the State of Palestine to UNESCO was removed in record time 
from the list of world heritage in danger. Now I would like to invite to the podium His Excellency Mr. Dr. Ramzi Khouri, Minister Dr. Ramzi Khouri, member of the Executive Committee of the PLO and President of the Higher Committee of Churches Affairs in Palestine. He is a strong believer that the significance of our heritage, in particular the Christian component, is acknowledged by the government and reflected in appropriate and reformed structures and increased funding. Please, Minister Ramzi Khouri, the floor is yours. Uh, we will have the translation, uh, the speech will be in Arabic, but you will have this translation into English. صاحب الغبطة بطريرك المدينة المقدسة للروم الأرثوذكس سيريوس الثالث حضرة الدكتور القس جيري بلاي الأمين العام لاتحاد مجلس الكنائس العالمي أصحاب السعادة والصفراء الحضور الكريم بداية أود أن أنقل إليكم تحيات فخامة السيد الرئيس محمود عباس رئيس دولة فلسطين وتحيات زملائي أعضاء اللجنة الرئاسية العليا لمتابعة شؤون الكنائس في فلسطين كما أتقدم إليكم بجزيرة الشكر والتقدير والامتنان لاستضافتكم هذا المعرض الفني الديني التاريخي والتراثي معرض كنيسة المهد الأمر الذي يعكس وقوفكم ومساندتكم للشعب الفلسطيني ويترك الأثر الكبير في قلوب الفلسطينيين المسيحيين وخاصة أبناء مدينة بيت لحم مهد السيد المسيح له المجد كما لا يفوتني إلا أن أتقدم بالشكر والامتنان لكافة الجهات التي أسهمت في التحضير والإعداد لإنجاح هذا المعرض وخاصة القطاع الخاص الفلسطيني ممثلا بشركة السي سي سي وبنك فلسطين وصندوق الاستثمار الفلسطيني كما تعرفون أن كنيسة المهد أقدم كنائس العالم والتي ارتادها الزوار منذ بنيت في عام 313 ميلادي والتي شهدت ميلاد السيد المسيح وحملت رسالة العدل والسلام والمحبة إلى العالم أصبحت اليوم وللأسف الشديد محاصرة خلف جدار الفصل العنصري الذي يفصلها عن توأمتها كنيسة القيامة في القدس المحتلة إن هذا الحصار لمهد السيد المسيح يعكس بالمعاناة الأكبر التي يعاني منها أبناء شعبنا الفلسطيني داخل الوطن وخارجه والذي تحرمهم سلطات الاحتلال الإسرائيلي حق الوصول إلى مدينتهم وكنيستهم كما تحرم المئات من الحجاج حق الوصول إلى المقدسات الدينية في كافة الأراضي المقدسة ضاربة بعرض الحائط كافة المواثيق الدولية التي تكفى الحرية العبادة أيها الحضور الكريم إن مهد المسيح له المجد يقرع أجراس الكنائس ليصل صداها إلى عواصم العالم وكافة الكنائس في شتى بقاع الأرض تطالب بتحقيق العدالة ورفع الظلم التاريخي عن الشعب الفلسطيني ومن حكافة حقوقه طبقا للشرعية الدولية ذات الصلة نحن لا نطلب المستحيل مطلبنا أن يعيش شعبنا حياة كريمة خالية من الاحتلال وأن ينشأ أطفالنا بما يليق بالشعب الفلسطيني نريد الأمن والاستقرار كباقي دول العالم من أجل بناء مستقبل مزدهر وغدا أجمل والحفاظ بمساعدتكم على ما تبقى من الوجود الفلسطيني المسيحي في الأراضي المقدسة نتطلع إليكم لزيارة فلسطين ودعم شعبها وتمكينه من البقاء والصمود على أرضه والذي رغم كل المعيقات التي ذكرتها وغيرها إلا أنه شعب حي شعب يحفظ أرضه وتراثه ومقدساته ويدافع عنها باسمكم جميعا أتقدم بجزيل الشكر لكافة الدول والمنظمات الدولية ولكل من ساهم في إنجاز ترميم كنيسة المهد للحفاظ على هذا الإرث العالمي والشكر موصول لبطرك المدينة المقدسة للروم الأرثوذكس كيرلوس كيرلوس ثيروس الثالث وحراسة الأراضي المقدسة وبطركية الأرمن الأرثوذكس لتسهيل كافة الإجراءات للبدء بأعمال الترميم أتمنى لكم الاستمتاع في أروخة معرض كنيسة المهد 
وانتهز الفرصة لدعوتكم لزيارة فلسطين والحجيجة إلى كنيسة المهد وخاصة ونحن مقبلون على أعياد الميلاد المجيد نسأل الله العلي القدير أن يشهد هذا العام القادم حلاً جزرياً لقضيتنا الفلسطينية لينال شعبنا الحرية والكرامة والاستقلال على طرابه الوطني وأقامت دولته المستقلة وعاصمتها مدينة القدس شكراً لحسن استماعكم ونلتقي في بكم في مدينة السيد المسيح ومهده بيت لحم شكراً Thank you, Excellency Dr. Khouri. <coughs> Bringing the exhibition to the World Council of Churches is not coincidental, Reverend Gray. Quite the contrary, WCC as a focal point reaching out to over 580 million Christians worldwide is certainly an inspiration for all of us to work together for unity, justice, and peace. Please accept this special gift as our way of celebrating with you WCCC 75th anniversary. For people of faith, the nativity in Bethlehem is associated with a joyful message of rebirth, renewal, light, and freedom. And there's only one site in the world that has the honor of being the birthplace of Jesus Christ. We do hope this exhibition gives visitors an impression of the wonder this unique church is. At the same time, I wish you see it as an invitation. I, I repeat what uh, our minister, Dr. Khouri said, invitation to visit Palestine, admire the beauty of the Basilica and the holy cities of Bethlehem and Jerusalem. For those who didn't visit yet, today we bring Bethlehem to you, Carla. <laughs> Hoping you will get excited to visit Palestine with different eyes. Please join me now in welcoming our Ambassador Ibrahim Khreshe to deliver his speech. Good afternoon. Your Beatitude, Theophilus III, Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem, dear Dr. Reverend Jerry Pillay, Secretary General of the World Council of Churches, Dr. Ramzi Khouri, member of the Executive Committee of PLO, head of the Higher Presidential Committee of Churches in Palestine, <coughs> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Today we are here to celebrate the successful restoration project of the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, Palestine. The art exhibition Bethlehem Reborn, featuring the pictures surrounding us, not only showcases art, but also documents the historical aspects of the renovation work. The story of the Church of Nativity is the story of the birth of the King of Peace, but also of Christianity as a whole. The message of peace came from Palestine to the world through the words that continue to inspire all faithful glory to God in the highest. We are gathering at the World Council of Churches, a symbol of Christian unity, to celebrate our accomplishment and reaffirm our commitment to protect the Christian presence at its birthplace, Palestine. The recent renovation revealed magnificent mosaics near the church, a testament to our rich Palestinian history, however, must also focus on the future. I would like to emphasize the importance of our collective work for justice in the Holy Land away from current pain and suffering. The exhibition vividly portrays the rich religious and cultural identity of Palestine. The pictures take us on a journey to birthplace of Jesus in Bethlehem, as well as to the city of Jerusalem where he was resurrected. This exhibition provides a unique opportunity to connect not just the history buildings, historic buildings, but also with the people reminding us that occupied Jerusalem requires our support during these challenging times 
when freedom, freedom is denied. Despite enduring a prolonged Israeli occupation, Palestinians persist in their struggle for their fundamental national rights. The church serves as a constant reminder of hope, the imperative of justice, and promise of, the, of a fresh beginning with God's grace in the near future. As we are here alongside our friends and partners, we extend the invitation to everyone to join us in our efforts to advance justice and peace in the Holy Land, Palestine. We also urge you to support the safeguarding of the holy religious sites in Jerusalem, most notably the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which face daily challenges and attacks from Israeli settlers and occupation forces. Finally, our thanks to Reverend Jerry Pele, General Secretary of the WCC, and to his wonderful team for hosting us here today. We are proud of your advocacy, work, and protective presence in the Holy Land, and we will be glad to help and support in every way possible. Blessed are peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. God bless Palestine, and I thank you. Thank you, Saad Tassafir, for your message. As we continue this journey towards Bethlehem, let us remind her and express our heartfelt gratitude to all the colleagues who made this event possible. Your dedication and passion for sharing the story of Bethlehem are truly commendable. Thank you. I would like now to invite Reverend Professor Dr. Jerry Pillay the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches. Reverend Pillay is the ninth General Secretary in the WCC's history since the Fellowship of the Churches was founded in 1948. He was previously Dean of the Faculty of Theology and Religion at the University of Pretoria. A member of the Uniting Presbyterian Church in South Africa, he comes from South Africa. When he became part of the leadership of the Uniting Presbyterian Church, he was appointed to serve on the WCC Central Committee and was also appointed to the Board of Trustees of the Council of World Mission. He also served on the National Executive of the South African Council of Churches for so many years and was the first president of the World Communion of Reformed Churches from 2010 until 2017. With church unity, as one of his absolute priorities. He also believes that churches need to offer guidance and direction to a suffering world. He says, we don't just gather to worship and pray and praise, which is of course a very important thing to do for us, but we also gather to transform the world, to reflect the glory, love, and justice of God. Reverend Pillay, the floor is yours. Your Beatitude, Patriarch Theophilus III, Patriarch of the Holy City of Jerusalem and all Palestine. Your Excellency, Dr. Ramzi Khoury, Head of the Higher Presidential Committee of Churches in Palestine. Your Excellency, Ambassador Ibrahim Karishi, Permanent Observer of the State of Palestine to the UN Switzerland. Your Eminences, Excellencies, Esteemed Guests, Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor today to welcome you to the Ecumenical Center that is hosting this very important exhibition on the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem. It is also my hope that you will not only visit Bethlehem as a historic city through this exhibition, but that you will also experience Bethlehem as a universal message of hope we are here to celebrate the results of a fruitful collaboration and joint efforts with our distinguished partners and friends from Palestine. We are also here to celebrate the continuous presence and witness 
of our churches in the Holy Land. Moreover, we are here to celebrate Bethlehem, the city of peace. Bethlehem calls us to justice, while its people suffer divisions and disparities. The very streets that witnessed the footsteps of prophets and kings now echo the cries for justice and self-determination. The walls of the city and of the Church of the Nativity tell tales of resistance, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to a just cause. The message of love, compassion, and peace brought to us by the birth of Jesus transcends borders and religions and reminds us to stand firm in our commitment for justice and peace to all in the Holy Land. The Church of the Nativity itself is a testament to the enduring power of faith as it witnessed centuries of prayers for peace. Bethlehem calls us to hope. Despite the checkpoints, barriers, and ongoing conflicts, Bethlehem carries the light of the star guiding the way for the wise men. It reminds us every day that even in the darkest of times, there is a, a guiding light, a source of hope that leads us towards a brighter future. For many, Bethlehem's very existence, its ability to survive, thrive, and remain relevant is a symbol of hope, not just for the Palestinians, but for the entire world. Bethlehem calls us to reconciliation and unity of the world, a message the Church of the Nativity proclaims to the world. Yet it is sad to see that in the Holy Land, we are faced with brokenness, pain, suffering, and disunity. This exhibition reminds us of peace and reconciliation and calls us to continue the work for just peace, unity and reconciliation, not only in Palestine, but throughout the whole world. In conclusion, Bethlehem and the Church of the Nativity stands as, as beacons of hope not just for Christians, but for all humanity. They remind us that no matter where we come from, our shared aspirations for peace and justice unites us. Let us draw inspiration from the sacred place to work tirelessly for a world where these ideals become a reality for everyone. It is indeed, as the World Council of Churches our joy to host this exhibition, and we look forward to tell the story of Palestine to the rest of the world around us and even beyond. And we hope and pray that for the next four weeks, as this exhibition will be present here, that much of the people from the public, from different sectors, will come and visit and gain a taste and experience, a historical knowledge and maybe even a living experience of life in the Holy Land. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend, for your strong words. We promise as Palestinians and as Palestinian Christians we'll never give up on hope. Uh, we're deeply thankful to all those who have contributed to this important exhibition. Thank you, your beatitude, for be blessing us with your presence today. Thank you, Secretary General Reverend Jerry Pillay, for joining us, too, with these strong messages and in underlining the close cooperation between WCC and Palestine. The successful touring of the uh, exhibition, yes, touring, because the exhibition started in 2019 at the Vatican Museums, and since then it has been touring through different countries, including uh, Germany, Italy, um, uh, UNESCO in Paris, and lately uh, uh, Austria, and today here in Geneva at WCC. 
So this, uh, this exhibition is um, evolving every time we go to another place. We, we develop the exhibition and we bring more uh, material and contact, content into this exhibition. But it would not have been possible without the support offered uh, of, by our sponsors for tonight for the exhibition in, in Geneva, uh, Bank of Palestine. I hope representatives of the Bank of Palestine are among us uh, tonight. The Consolidated Construction Company, CCC, Palestine Investment Fund, and the scientific foundation of Hisham Adib Hijjawi, as well as individual private donors. Few of them are among us today, and I would like to give them a special welcome. Thank you, Ambassador Ibrahim and the team for your support to bring the exhibition to WCC. Thank you, Ambassador of the State of Palestine to the Holy See, Isa Kassisiye, for initiating the first exhibition at the Vatican Museums in, in 2019 and for your ongoing su support. We are also grateful to Taysir Masriye, our curator, who believed in the idea and message of the exhibition. And a special thanks to all of you joining us today to discover the wonders of the nativity. So now Carla and me, would like to invite you to the tour, followed by the reception, and hopefully see you in Palestine. So I don't know if Carla would like to, to close with other... Yes, simply to emphasize that indeed our journey towards Bethlehem does not end with this event, but it is an ongoing journey, a reminder of the values of hope, peace, and justice as universal aspirations connecting us, as said Reverend Jerry. So thank you all for being here in this meaningful occasion. Thank you also for all those who joined us online. And let's continue today the journey at least by uh, visiting the exhibition. There will be a guided tour for those of you who would like to join. And I remind you that the panels outside are in French. However, you can scan the QR code that is present on the panels or on the brochures, and then you will find more explanation uh, with different languages, and you can choose the language of, uh, that is more convenient to you. I also would like to remind you that the exhibition is open for four weeks until the 5th of October, so you are welcome to come back and invite friends, family um, to come and visit and share this experience with all of us. So thank you again, and let's continue our uh, celebration outside.